Hello everybody, this is Vasavi from At Home. In today's session, we are going to learn few basic terms or things about which you should be knowing about statistics, okay? So the first one is data. What do you mean by data? Data is nothing but a collection of information, okay? So you would have seen people, you know, they take census, they collect data from the public or from the place of origin and those data would be raw piece of information that has to be processed, analyzed and interpreted into meaningful information and then they arrive at some conclusion, okay? So the raw pieces of information, we call it data. So these data could be grouped or ungrouped. So you may get a doubt, what is this grouped data and ungrouped data? So first let me tell you what is ungrouped data. The original form of data which you collect is ungrouped data, okay? You haven't done anything to it. It is just the raw source of information. Here I have given you an example. The marks obtained by 25 students in a class in a certain examination are given below. So here are the marks of these 25 students on a uh, examination, okay? And you may see that the marks are written as it is. Some numbers are repeated. Like you can see 25 here. You can see the 25 here again. And 25 here. But still it is written as and when you get the information. Okay. It is just noted down as the information are collected. And this raw set of information you call ungrouped data. Here I have said it is 25 students. Right. That itself has got 25 values and it is really hard when the number of students are more, right? You know, you will have too many numbers and uh, they do, don't make any meaning. Uh, no, it, it is all meaningless, right? Just having too many numbers, nobody is going to understand what it is. No layman would understand what it is. So what we normally do in statistics is, we just make it in condensed form. You just make it in presentable form. Like, you know, you may prepare a tally mark or frequency table and uh, you put them in a table so that anybody who looks at the table can just, a person with a minimum statistical uh, knowledge can understand what has been said, okay? Something could be understood from the frequency table. So, See, to put the data in a more condensed form, we make groups of suitable size and mention the frequency of each group, okay? Such a table is called grouped frequency distribution table. I'll just show you that later. Here I have just shown you a frequency table. See, I have taken an example here. The sale of shoes of various sizes at a shop on a frequency day is given below. So this is the sales made, sales of shoes made in a shop. You know, the different sizes are noted down. Okay, first you sold seven, size number seven, and then you sold the shoe number eight, five, four, nine, eight, five, seven, likewise. So we can see that uh, the number of, the sizes of shoes are very little only. Okay, are limited. Maybe you can see the minimum value is four and the maximum is nine okay so it is something ranging between the size ranges between four to nine only you see most of the numbers are repeated again and again so instead of putting it just in like this ungrouped data putting it in like a stretch of numbers what we do is you can just make a table out of it where you have a column for the size okay the all possible sizes you put it here so it is from 4 to 9 and you have a column for the tally mark and then yet another column for frequency. I'll just tell you how to do this. First you see 7, right? Just go in order. You see 7, you just put a line on 7, okay? Uh, then 8, put a line on 8. Okay, then 5, 4, 9, 8. So put another line on 8. 5, again a line, 7, 6, 8, 9, 6, 7, 
नाइन एट सेवन नाइन एन अदर नाइन सो I just put that nine like a cross so that I can make five of them into one group. Okay, so because that's the fifth line, I put it across nine. Okay, and you have six, five, eight, cross again nine. You make another block four, five, five, eight, nine, and six. Okay, now I can count the number of lines and write it as frequency. You have two here, then you have five, you have four, four here, and then here it is six, and finally you have seven. Okay, now you just find the total of these. You will see that it is. Well, let us count. So that's uh, two plus five is seven. Seven plus four is eleven. Eleven plus Four is fifteen. Fifteen plus six is twenty-one. Twenty-one plus seven is twenty-eight. So the total is twenty-eight here. If you count the number of shoes here, you will find twenty-eight numbers. So, okay. If they match, then you can be sure that you haven't missed out anything, and your frequency table is right. So now, just see. Look, just imagine like when we had earlier. You just had all the numbers listed out like this, right? so that doesn't make any meaning to us but when you look at this table you know at a glance itself you can understand that the, the sizes available were from i mean sold were from 4 to 9 and you have sold this many number on each size right so that gives you a clear picture understood so this is called frequency table and the tally marks so and the next one would be to make it even more you know in a condensed form you no know, you go in for the class interval that is you you put the table in continuous interval form or non continuous interval form that you need to bother for time being let's see how you use the class interval see here i have taken another example you have uh, so many numbers here ranging from 3 right the minimum is 3 right From three to the maximum, what is the maximum? Is it forty-eight? Yeah, forty-eight is the maximum. So from three to forty-eight, you have numbers. And just imagine, even if you're putting it in the frequency table, it would be hard, right? From three to forty-eight, you have to list out all the numbers. Instead, what you can do is you can make them in groups, and this is called grouped data. Understood? You can make them in groups. So and then uh, you can see you can know like how many groups it makes. So what I do is I make a group. You call it class interval. Each class is bounded by two figures, which are class limits. You will have a lower limit and the upper limit. I have just arranged these numbers in the example given in ascending order. Okay. So that will make a job easier. You can otherwise also do directly, but this. makes it easier i have just arranged the marks in ascending order now i am going to make these marks in a group okay i can take from 0 to 10 then 10 to 20 i am just forming these as groups smaller groups like 20 to 30 okay then you have 30 to 40 the class interval should be the same okay see that your class interval is always the same and then you have 40 to 50 that's the maximum you are having i guess because the maximum number is 48 right so we can stop here see these numbers from 3 to 48 i have just reduced it to five rows i have condensed it to five rows this one is the lower limit okay see if you have a class interval like 0 to 10 this is called lower limit or you can say lower class limit and this is upper class limit and this is the class interval you call it class interval with the gap here is with the class 10 okay you have the gap between the numbers is 10 and also remember when i say 0 to 10 in the first one i would take only the values from 0 to 9 okay the upper limit value will be taken into in the next row only okay the 10 the number 10 will be added 
in the second row okay understood so here when i say 0 to 10 i am going to look at the numbers from 0 to 9 i don't take the 10 okay so 0 to 9 how many numbers do i have i have five numbers right if you want you can put it as tally marks or you can directly write so that's five okay 10 to 20 just see 10 to 20 oh you have too many you have to take only till 19 okay so that's going to be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so let me put that one right then 20 to 30 how many are there 20 to 30 i can take till here so that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And 30 to 40, it is, you see from here till here, right? So, it is like, and that's 10 values, okay? And finally, from 40 to 50, it is going to be only 5 values. So, that is, now let us count these numbers so you can know the total. So that's 25, 35, 40. Okay. 40 is the total. See, if you count these numbers, you will get 40. Okay. So this would be the continuous interval form. So these are the basic things you should know. And in our next video, we would be learning more about the measures of central tendency. That is mean, median and mode. Hope this video was useful to you. Thank you. Bye.